Good morning. Happy Easter. If you do not have a service bulletin, a link can be found on the church Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash stpaas, stpaas. A link to an online book of common prayer can be found there or with the search engine. When I give page numbers, they are for the book of common prayer. But if you have that service bulletin, you have everything you need. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 118, verses 1, 2, and 14 to 24. 
We will read this in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, 
and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. The faithful women came to the tomb and saw that it was no longer sealed. They looked inside and without realizing it in the moment, saw what no human eyes had ever seen before, a sealed tomb that had been emptied of its corpse. Their arrival precipitated the arrival of angels and they were terrified. But the women were the first to hear the most stupendous news that human ears had ever heard. He is not here, but has risen. I myself have gone looking for these tombs in Israel on two trips. I wanted to experience the presence of Christ in a new way. There are two such tombs. That might seem like a problem, but it deters idolatry. One of them is called the Garden Tomb. In the late 1800s, someone noticed that a wall of an ancient quarry looked like a skull. Excavations revealed a tomb. There were other indications that this might be the place. I crouched low and entered this tomb. I stood in a small room. Next to it was an even smaller room with a shelf or bench carved out of the stone. Upon this bench was laid the body of Jesus, I was told. I touched it and I experienced nothing. It was even more than that, a profound absence as if this was the one place in the world where Jesus was not present. On the next trip to Israel, I went to the traditional site of Calvary, where the Church of the Resurrection covers the Holy Sepulchre. Within this vast and unique building was something that looked like a tiny chapel, freestanding, roof and all. The entrance and the interior were completely covered with icons. There was no wall to be seen inside. It, it was warm and smelled strongly of beeswax from many candles. At the back was an icon that swung to the side. I swung it aside and put my hand on the stone of the cavity behind, and there I felt nothing. I felt stone. I did not feel any special presence of Christ. So I went outside and sat on a bench and watched Christians from every part of the world come to this place to do what I had just done. And here, I did find a special sense of Christ's presence in the Christians from all over the world. We had all gone through the waters of baptism. We were all parts of Christ's body, the church, and we were from all over the world. That's just the point. Christ is not in any one place on the planet, but all of the baptized people are his body, the church, and the people in the church are spread out all over. Now he is definitely not in the tomb, but he is in the waters of baptism and inside each one of us because we are baptized into him. Roll back the stone, look inside. He's not there, he is risen. Remember that and live it, especially if you get sick. Remember that and live it, especially if a loved one is sick. Remember that and live it, especially when we see the grim statistics and hear the poignant stories of the people who cared for the individual persons who died or the people who grieve. Remember that and live it, especially when seeing a picture of body bags in a refrigerated truck. Remember that and live it, especially when you grieve. He is risen. What great, wonderful, stupendous news. He is risen. Amen. Page 358 in the prayer book, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 6, are found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Martin, our bishop, and for our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, for our parish staff, for St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Raytown, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those affected by the coronavirus, and for Karen and Doug Boyd, Jeannie McDowell, Rick, and also Anna, Jan Bateman, Jeff Brockhouse, Bud Brown, Sherry Candillo, Craig Cartwright, Lisa Cole, Angela Crawford, Harold Czar, Julie Davis, Dick Davey, Misty Dyer, Elizabeth, Wayne Forrest, Alex and Susan Green, Claire Gustafson, Felix Harden, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Greg and Janet Helma, Ed and Blair Joyner, Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, John Kelly, Ray Mason, Michael and Sheila Mayberry, Heather Maynard, Phil Maynard, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bud Myers, Lisa Nordyke, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overbay, Bob and Georgia Raper, Betty Ritchie, Rob, Tom and Carly Roberton, Rick Sisko, John Thompson, Mary Warning, Don and Donna White. We pray for those serving in the military and their families, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Carl and Julie Bradley, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, James Femmeler, Tom Gildea, Sean Harvey, Ryan Kelly, Aaron Lindy, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Kylie Moore, Lucy Nix, Sean Perrone, Samantha Reed, Nolan Roberson III, Dan Sanford, Hunter Soul, Melanie Yates. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, Alana Chrisman, Jim Coleman, Monica Hitt, Randy Malloy, Brian Norman, John and Boo Van Haften. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. 
We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially the Reverend Louis T. Johnston, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I look forward to taking your hand and giving you the peace of Christ and receiving that from you under this roof. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.
have a few announcements. Uh, we have daffodils instead of lilies behind me at the altar. That's what we could get, and in fact, they are plentiful on the church grounds where all sorts of things are blooming, such as the fruit trees. As part of the agricultural ministries at St. Peter and All Saints, I'm happy to report that there are 44,000 new residents in South Kansas City in two high-rise buildings. They are honeybees who moved in last Sunday. Their queens were released a couple days ago, and they all decided to stay. Many apple, pear, and cherry trees will benefit from these little pollinators. The whole neighborhood will benefit, as will our expanded community garden and the many beautiful flowers planted around the building. Oh, and we'll have grapevines pretty soon, too. The agricultural ministries at this church benefit hungry neighbors. We grow the food right here, in addition to giving away thousands of items of purchased food annually. Some of you are newly connected to this church. The YouTube views are sometimes twice our Sunday attendance. I invite you to a deeper connection with this community. Please contact me at rector at stpaas.org. That's R-E-C-T-O-R at stpaas.org. Or call the church at 816-942-1066. That's all on our Facebook page. Here's another address, facebook.com slash stpaas. Or our website, which you might have guessed is stpaas.org. We all would love to get acquainted with you. And happy Easter. May I suggest that each one of us call someone to else today and say, the peace of Christ be with you. And also, happy Easter. Thank you, and I will see you next week.